talk a little bit about uh, how to get better at League or Smite, or any MOBA for that matter, um, whether it's Dota or Dota 2. Um, so the first thing I'll say is uh, having a good attitude coming into the game. Uh, oh, before I start though, uh, just want to make sure that you guys know this is about ranked and getting to the next level. You want if you're in bronze, silver, gold, platinum, or diamond. Um, I believe these steps can help you get to that next level, get you to the next step, and uh, make you an overall better player. So, whenever I'm talking about this, um, I know that a lot of these things that I've added to my playing has increased my level of play and made me a lot better. And whenever I've talked to other higher level players, uh, they've always given these same tips. So I'm just putting this out there to kind of help you guys out. Uh, the first one is uh, going to be good attitude. You're going to come in <clears throat> knowing you have an hour set apart. You know that the game could take up to an hour to finish. Whether that includes uh, champ select or not, uh, you want to always set aside an hour. Okay. Uh, if you live with your family, with your parents, or with somebody else, go ask them, make sure, say, hey, uh, do you need me to do anything for the next hour? Because I'm I'm going to play a ranked match. I'm going to try and uh, do really well. Just make sure that you're explaining to them, say, hey, this is something that is important to me, and I want to do it, and uh, I want to set aside time specifically for it. So make sure that you go out and you you make it a point to ask them and try and set that up to where there's not going to be outside distractions like you need to take the trash out or something like that in, in the middle of a team fight so you want to make sure that <clears throat> you're going to set aside that time make sure uh, people in your house know hey he's doing something that's important to him like we're going to leave him alone so make sure you let your parents know or whatever that you're doing that and if they need you to take the trash out just have them do it now or wait till after you're done uh, to do it so, moving on, uh, also, uh, having a good attitude, coming in, uh, knowing, like, okay, I'm going to do a good job here. I'm going to come in, I'm going to have a good mindset, I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to win this game, okay? You're coming in already uh, fresh, you, uh, you've had a good night's sleep, you're coming in, you're, you're well prepared, you're not feeling bad about the game, already before you even start the game. You want to make sure you're coming in. You feel comfortable in your room or wherever you're at. Make sure uh, the air conditioner is set to the right temperature for you. That you're not like super hot or you're super cold. You want to make sure the temperature is just right, so that you're comfortable. You're not having to worry about outside things happening while you're inside the game. So that'll help you get to that next step. Um, also, making sure that uh, you are happy and that you're not mad, frustrated or sad or or anything like that you want to make sure that you're coming in to ranked with that mindset if you want to just blow some steam off go to normals go go blow some steam in normals go have some fun enjoy yourself that's what normals are for uh, but ranked is for when you want to want to take that step and go after something go go like have a trophy and show people hey this is what I, this is how far I am um, let's move on to the next one uh, number two or say never surrender. Okay, when you're in ranked, don't surrender. If you feel like you're gonna lose, take that mindset, throw it out the door. You don't need to have that. Okay. Uh, if you don't feel like you can win, then you've already lost. Okay. You've already lost the game. So you might, you might as well just surrender there. At that, if you're gonna be that way. So make sure that you take that mindset, you throw it away. You don't need that negativity. You've already got enough going against you. If you if you're behind by 20 kills, or you're you've lost like four or five towers down from them, or they have so many more objectives, they have so much more gold than you, whatever, whatever that may be, you want to make sure that you take that mindset and you throw it away. I'll tell you this: I've I've won so many games just in the past week that I should have lost. Uh, we played. I played one with my buddy, and I wish I would have had it recorded. We uh, we won a three v five. I went and backdoored their uh, their enemy uh, boss while four of them, 
from the enemy team were taking my boss. I was able to push down the side wave, uh, take uh, take the enemy phoenix, and then the boss, and and win the game for my team. And right there, we could have just given up once we were down uh, three to five people. They were up by like ten kills, fifteen kills. They had more gold than us by like twenty thousand. I mean, it was just a ridiculous deficit, and we were able to come back and win that game because uh, I took the initiative and went after what was important and pushed down and took took it for the win. Um, another thing to go with that, number four or number three, is going to be map awareness. Okay, make sure that you're aware of the map, that you have a map for one. Uh, Paying attention to the map, knowing where the enemies are, is key to winning the game. Whoever has vision, or vision wins games, is pretty much what it is. If you're paying attention to the map, you know where your opponents are, you know where you need to go. It's a tool that you can use, that anyone can use, but I will say like 80% of the players do not use the map like 90% of the game. Like, It's ridiculous how many people don't use the map. Okay, you uh, just knowing that there is a map for one <laughs> that you can look down or look up on the screen and you're like, oh, okay, there's three guys on my left, there's uh, two people in the center, and I'm on the right lane and I've already pushed all the way up to the enemy tower. Okay, nobody can come up and take me because they're all visible on the map and I don't have to worry about anybody coming after me. So, is it safe to take this tower? Yes, it is. So you take the tower. Okay, and you're not punished for it because you were paying attention to the map. That is a key aspect to, to keep in mind. Map awareness, making sure that you're paying attention to the map. Uh, my thing is, I take every 10 seconds, I force myself to look at the map. Just every 10 seconds, take a second and look at the map. Just look at where... Uh, the opponents are, look at where your teammates are, look at uh, the positioning of the wave of minions pushing, like are, are they on your side pushing or are they on the enemy side pushing, where is everybody on the enemy side, are they visible, how many people are visible, and how many people are gone. Um, just knowing that gives you so much information. If there are three people visible on the map, you know there's a possibility of two people being near you and being able to take you down if you haven't already seen them on the map earlier so just keeping that in mind that if there are two people missing or three people missing there's a chance you're getting yanked you're get, you're gonna be you're gonna have three people in your lane so just keep that in mind and as you move forward and I'll say the fourth thing goes right side by side with that is warding make sure that you're buying wards I know in, in, in smite like I think I'm the only one that's warded in the past like 50 games that I've played. I'm the only one that puts wards out, um, and it's kind of it's kind of sad like that in 50 games. That's four times 10 times five, 40 times five is 20. So 200 people out of the last 200 people that I've played with in the 50 games that I've played, I'm the only one that wards every game. So that tell like right there, I'm always keeping wards up. If you watch my games, uh, a lot of my games, I'm the one putting the wards out. Uh, and usually there's not very many wards on the map except the ones that I put out. So that's a key aspect. And also making sure ward placement. That's a good key to the to warding. You don't want to just stick a ward just anywhere you want to make sure that you're putting it to get the most vision you possible and get you the the best points to see vi have vision so like putting it like if you're pushing the wave you're gonna to want to put it somewhere in the jungle that they would have to pass through to get to you so I usually go to some sort of intersection where there's like two or three different paths meeting and I'll put a ward right there in the center of that that way when they walk through I'm gonna see them Okay, I'm paying attention to the map. I know when I'm getting uh, people coming after me, so I can take that that few extra seconds that I'm getting vision of them and start running away. 
and that'll save that saved my life so many times. Uh, just paying attention to that, and seeing that they're coming up. Um, now the fifth thing, this right here, is a huge thing for Smite and League. Okay, huge. Okay, this game, Smite or League, are called MOBAs. MOBAs are not a team deathmatch game. Okay, they are a tower defense game. Okay. The objective is to take the enemy nexus, okay? You could have a thousand kills and your opponents have zero. It could be a thousand to zero and your opponents can still win by destroying your nexus. So right there, it doesn't matter how many kills you get, if the if your nexus is destroyed, you lose. It doesn't matter how many how many kills your opponents have. If their nexus is destroyed, they lose. Okay, so keep that in mind. This is an objective based game, not a team deathmatch. So, going with the map awareness, make sure you're paying attention. Okay, let's say there's like three people to the, on the left lane. Okay, there's one person in the middle, and then there's one person missing on their team. And then you are pushing on your right side. Okay, Let's just say that for instance, okay, and you can push up and you could put some damage on this tower in front of you. Or you can push and leave the leave the lane, go mid, help get a kill, or try and get a kill, and then go over to the left lane and try and get a kill over there. Okay. Yes, kills help. I'm not gonna say they don't. Okay, kills are, are good. They they help out, get you gold income. Okay, and I'm gonna put it this way. Kills give you gold gold gives you items okay minions give you gold okay gold gives you items okay if you sit in lane if you just sit there okay the good thing about sitting there and not dying and not getting kills you're still getting gold you're still getting experience you're just sitting there gaining experience in gold and with that comes levels and gives you health and, and mana and all that good stuff okay so just by staying in lane without dying or going back all the time because you're taking tons of damage trying to get kills make sure you're paying attention that that experience gain the gold income right there is gonna is gonna get you to that point okay you don't need kills to get you gold okay the kills are really just like a trophy system. You get kills, they make you feel good. Okay, they give you, they boost your morale. That's pretty much all they're worth. Okay, once you get to a point where your team has six items each on each of their characters, all five people have six items each. It doesn't how much. It doesn't matter how much gold you get or how many more kills you get. That gold that you're getting right then does nothing for you other than buy you wards and mana pots and health pots and and if you're playing smite it gives you defense and and damage but it's not gonna make that much of a difference in in that manner so make sure that you're not worrying so much about kills and you're worrying more about the objectives because the more objectives you take the better your chances are winning more than getting kills okay you want to take towers over kills but if you can kill somebody and then take a tower do it okay if you can kill the person in your lane and then take the tower that you're in that's a great job to do but if you have to travel all the way across the map just to get this kill there's no point to do that if you can take towers okay I would say prioritize towers and, and phoenixes over getting anything else okay make sure you're pushing those towers make sure you're taking those phoenixes because those phoenixes are gonna spawn super minions to push your wave for you and you'll never have to go back to that lane to do that because your minions are gonna do it for you they're just they're gonna get stronger there's gonna be more of them the bigger guys and they're just gonna push for you and that goes for a league too like you take a nexus or a phoenix whatever you you're gonna get super minions spawning there and you're gonna you're not gonna have to worry about it Okay, they'll push on their own, and if your opponents aren't paying attention, they could potentially take down your your enemy nexus or 
<laughs> or boss monster. Like, just make sure that you know that, that this is an objective game, not a team deathmatch. Okay? Now, we're going to go on to the sixth point, and the, pretty much the final point. It's going to be character mechanics. Make sure that whenever you go to play a character, that you've played several games with this character, and you know him. Okay? I'm not saying, like, you just bought this character yesterday, and you played, like, three games on him, and, oh, man, he's my main character now. No, that's not how that works. Like, don't, don't do that. You want to, you want to play the character for at least ten games, okay? At least ten games. And you want to make sure that you're, you're paying attention to his abilities, you're going to make sure that you've read on his stuff and know what he does, you're going to want to make sure that you've, you understand all the mechanics and the features that that character offers to play them at a high level. Um, like me, I play uh, in League. Of, I'll give League of Legends as a uh, example here. I played Vladimir in the top lane. Okay, played him for for years now in the top lane. Okay, I am good enough with Vlad now to know when my power spikes are and when what champions I'm bad against. Okay. So, like, let's say Riven, for instance. Okay, she's a burst-style character. She jumps on you. She bursts you down and kills you instantly. Level 6. Okay. Well, I know. Okay, she's going to beat me from level 1 all the way up to level 8. When I hit level 9, I will be better than she is. And she won't be able to kill me as long as I didn't feed her. Okay, so I need to make sure that I get my I wait till I get to level nine power spike, and go in on her. Okay, why do I get a power spike at level nine? Okay, this is a key thing for all characters, and I think everyone should know this. Okay, level five for Smite and level six for League, you get your one point into your ultimate, your fourth ability. Okay, knowing that, every time after that. There's a point that goes into your abilities, okay? In all boat or in both games, the level uh, you have five points in each of your abilities, pretty much, okay? Except for your ultimate in League. League has three points where Smite has uh, has five in the ultimate, okay? So make sure that you understand this. Your Say your your square button or your Q or whatever whatever you're using to play the game with X for Xbox I guess. Um, your first ability is your strong ability. It does the most damage. Okay, when you hit level nine, it's gonna put that fifth point into your ability. Okay, on that fifth point, it's gonna give you a burst of damage and it's gonna give you cooldown reduction and at that level you're gonna have more mana than you did at like level eight it's gonna give you a significant increase to be able to use that ability more often okay so knowing that you're gonna have a lot more burst potential at level nine than you do at any other level okay so knowing this you need to understand that when you hit level nine you can go in and be a lot stronger and more aggressive with your opponent because you hit level 9 first, if you hit it first. Make sure that you know that you hit it first. Okay, for me when I play Vlad, it doesn't matter who I'm playing against, as long as I play it safe and play back and not take too much damage, I can sit there and sustain through all the damage, be able to poke them down, make them go back, let me gain the experience lead while they're back, then I push the wave into their tower. Once it's at their tower, if I choose I want to go back to the to base and buy items, that's when I go back. I don't go back until that wave is pushed into their into their turret. Okay? And I need to make sure I have vision so that the enemy jungler or other laner doesn't come up into my my lane and kill me for and punish me for doing that. So make sure that you're taking that advantage, but you're doing it safely. So you want to make your opponent lose as much experience as you possibly can. That way you gain the experience lead and gives you a level advantage. So make sure you're taking advantage of that. Also, knowing the characters, uh, if you want to know when they get their spikes, um, some of them get them at level 9, some of them get them at level, uh, I think, 7. Um, 
because there are some abilities that they go from doing as like 80 damage and then all of a sudden they're doing 130 damage okay on each hit so you need to make sure that you're paying attention to when they get that power spike uh, it's not just level 9 or just this level like for every character it's different for each character and pay attention to it because sometimes it's not just a damage buff it's a cooldown reduction buff meaning you can use it more often quickly so make sure you're paying attention to that uh, easiest way to do it is get online go to the smite website or if you have a phone use the app uh, the smite app or the league of legends app or website look up the character that you're using that you want to master and get down to a, a really high level pay attention to when those power spikes are going to come up power spikes happen when damage goes up cooldown reduction goes up or when you buy an item that gives you a specific amount of damage that you feel like you can go up like Corky for instance get in Aurelia for League of Legends they get a huge power spike when they buy Trinity Force okay so knowing when they get their item they're gonna spike huge okay during that first little part of the game okay which is called the mid game okay make sure that you understand when your character gets the power spike and that will give you a huge advantage is knowing when you get your power spike okay what will make you even better is knowing when all the other characters get their power spikes but that comes with time that comes with experience and knowledge of the game and just paying attention really like if you really want to get to the higher level you you just have to take the time to read the characters understand when they get their their uh, power spikes why they're getting their power spikes and when is the best time for you to go in on them okay learning combos like uh, your Q E combo or your square X combo whatever you want you want to call it like your combos knowing what you can do when you can do it to do the most damage and get out without taking any damage or taking very little damage is is called a trade winning the trade okay so make sure that you're trading very well, that you're doing more damage to them than they're doing to you, and that you're getting out without staying in. Okay? You don't after you if you're an ability based champion like Odin, for instance, for Smite, you press your X button and you put your shield on yourself and then you jump on them, okay, that does a ton of burst damage. Now's the time to back away. Okay? I'll tell you this, I was playing a few days ago I was playing an arena and it was a 2v5 and we were still within a hundred tickets of of the enemy team and they had three more people than us and I only died like four times that entire game and I had like 10 kills or something like that it was ridiculous um, and we were still really close okay we had a guy that disconnect could come back in at the very end of the game and feed like 11 deaths and he literally lost us the game like if we would have if he wouldn't have joined we probably would have won the game in a 2v5 like it was ridiculous but to make the long story short I was playing Odin and I would hit my shield I would jump on this uh, enemy hunter burst her down hit her for like half her health then I'd back away wait for my cooldown to come back up I would bring my shield back up and jump on her and kill her only did it twice I would walk away had the kill took no damage really at all like I was still above half health after both those times jumping into a group of three of them and bursted her down killed her walked away with half health and was still sitting there with quite a bit of mana and it just cost me a little bit so just some cooldowns and some time but made sure that I played it safe played it right won the trade even though I was in a bad situation I made a, a better I made it better for doing it that way playing it safe knowing your character knowing how they work and what makes them work is will make you a better character or a better player overall um, okay so that's the last of of my uh, how to get better at League or Smite. Uh, but I just want to stress one thing. If you take away one thing from all of this, 
this is it this is the best thing is map awareness it doesn't matter if you don't take any of the other things that I've said in this uh, away with you and, and learn it if you take away map awareness and you focus on that you're already going to be practicing your characters you're already going to not want to surrender or you're going to have a good attitude coming in like you're going to learn those as you go but if you take away the map awareness paying attention to that you're already going to be working on your character mechanics and you'll eventually figure out that it's an objective based game and not a TDM so just make sure you're paying attention to the map and that will make you a lot better of a, care, a player and a lot better of a teammate just knowing like okay I can punish this guy for for what he's doing over here by doing this or whatever like just make sure that you're you know that map awareness is the biggest key to make you better